By any measure, Leicester City are a remarkable football club. Back in 2016, uh, they won the Premier League when they were more used to fighting off relegation than winning trophies, but they did so at odds of 5,000 to 1. Remarkable. Then two months ago, they showed that wasn't a fluke by, by winning the FA Cup, beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final. But perhaps the biggest success they've had is the opening, just six months ago, of the new training facility. And I'm very lucky to be joined by John Ledwidge, who's the head of uh, Sports Turf and Grounds at this event. John, you must pinch yourself every time you come through the front door here. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, the way that uh, this site has, has rose out of the ground over the past uh, two years of the project um, was quite phenomenal. Um, really, really lucky to have been part of the project to deliver it literally from buying the land, drawing it out on paper, working with the architects and all the consultants right through to the finished article. Um, yeah, it is pinch yourself every, mo every morning, but also you, know, you do get used to it really quickly. Um, so you do have to sort of reset and, and find yourself again and think, right, no, I am really, really lucky to be here every single day of the week. Now, I know you came here about seven years ago. Did you know about the potential of this project then? I mean, you wouldn't have known about the success on the pitch, but the potential of the fact you're going to get a new training ground. Did you know about that? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's always been the planning. And I know that I speak to the grounds up and down the country and there's always a, we're going to build a new training ground. And Le Leicester were no diff different to that. And uh, fast forward, we actually, you know, we, we actually made it a reality. And I think a lot of it depends on the success on the pitch too. Um, but, you know, it was always an aspiration of the club to build something like this. And, uh, yeah, we're just really, really grateful that it's here now and that we've been part of it. Um, how much involvement did you have? I mean, often you hear about wonderful new stadia being built, but they forget about the pitch. Yeah. How much involvement did you have to make sure you got what you wanted here? Yeah, it's, it's, for me, it was really about being embedded in the project from the start. And like I said earlier, you know, we were really fortunate that, you know, from inception right through to finish, we were involved. I had a voice around the table. Um, I made it quite clear to the club that when you look at a, a scale um, of site this size, um, we occupy in and around 95% of that. We manage 95% of the footprint. So for us not to be involved probably would have been futile. I think we, we needed to be involved from the start. And it wasn't a battle with the club. You know, we'd spent many years building reputation and we had delivered projects for them of building pitches at our old training ground, which is now the Women's Training Centre. Um, so they knew it was valid. They knew it was credible. And I'm really fortunate and grateful that they involved me in that process from the start. And I know part of it is the uh, Sports Turf Academy we're actually standing in. I know this was, a, this was a, an idea you'd had some time before you even got here. And it was just the fact you, you were here enabled it to become a reality. Yeah, it was because, you know, I, when I was at my time at the Rico Arena where football club had left and they were going to come back, also going to come back. So work at the stadium and get the pitch prepped. Um, we did that and then they didn't arrive. So that wasn't very helpful. But my mind being my mind, I'm always looking for what next, what are we doing, how are we going to develop? Um, and the idea was born, I've still got the idea in, in, the, in the book, you know, the scribbles in the book that I had the first idea for the concept. Um, and for private investment at the time, you know, we we're looking for private investment to get it off the ground, give the industry something. But at £13 million as a price tag, uh, the kickback wasn't very good for an investor. So we parked that and then fast forward that, you know, once the plans became a reality for this place, it was a case of re-evaluating that business plan, looking at how it could work within the setting that we've got here. And as I, you know, I said to the chief executive when I walked into it, I'm going to sell you a piece of my soul. Now, that wasn't selling it for money. That was selling her a piece of something that I believed in and I wanted to achieve. And fortunately, fast forward like three years and here we are with a fantastic building just about to launch. Um, so really happy about that and uh, a really robust business model that sits behind it. So I've had to learn a whole sort of attribute of skills I never thought I'd have. But yeah, here we are and, uh, you know, really, really proud of what we've achieved so far. Now, you told me the, the, what you, where you were and what you were doing when you heard news that uh, the chief exec had managed to sell the project to the owner. Yeah. You just tell a little bit more of that story, please. Yeah, so about four years ago, we take over a club in Belgium, OH Leuven, and uh, we've been there ever since. And I was out there building the infrastructure, so starting to assess what they were doing there and how we can improve, build a culture, build a team, build pitches and you know infrastructure around the pitches. And uh, yeah, it, she was over with the owners in, in Thailand and uh, she had proposed the idea and she rang me it was the dead of night but obviously she was excited to tell me and yeah um, I was half asleep but she told me look the owner loves the idea he loves the concept he's behind you 100% let's go and make it work so then we got creative we're down with the architects looking at the building and um, as I've said previously I didn't want to be a partition wall in a in a tin shed you know I wanted to be a destination that people would be proud to come to would be inspired by um, and as you can see in front of you now, I think we've, we've achieved that and now the hard work begins of making it work. 
Can you just tell me a little bit more? We hear about Sports Turf Academy, but what actually does it involve? What does it include? So the business plan is built on four pillars. Uh, the first pillar and the one that everything circles around is education and training. So for us to offer training and education to the highest possible level. So you might come to us for a one day course as a volunteer. So we work with the volunteers um, in our technical services department. Um, we'll bring them in, do a one day course on, it could be mower setup, it could be fertilizer application, anything you can think of. Um, we can make those courses right through to a postgraduate degree. You know, we've got a doctor in house, um, which he helps uh, validate all those courses that we'll write. We'll work with our training partners and providers to provide that base level of training and then we'll just add on modules that we feel are relevant and um, that the students will love to learn and enjoy and hopefully get a lot more from than sort of like your boxed off standard level two, level three, level four, level five. Mm -hmm. Now inside of there, I saw there was a laboratory, there's yeah. a, a seminar suite, yeah. there's meeting rooms. Yeah. What else have you actually got in the, the bricks and mortar of the building itself? So this is purposely built for us. And again, the laboratory is a big part of that space. And you know, the space, is is the space you know it's a great and aspirational building and we've got a functional laboratory which is really important but the usp really is is that people that come through the building get access to this they get access to train on the latest and the greatest we've got a mechanics workshop downstairs and i talk about it all the time our mechanics got very expensive taste um but you know we want it to be the cutting edge technology in there uh, we work with our providers and our suppliers to make sure that we have got the latest technology and equipment in there that we can inspire and teach a generation on that sort of level of equipment. And again, coming out onto a stitch pitch, a fibre sand pitch, a natural construction, green keeping on the golf course, landscaping, mechanics, we can cover it all. And we want to cover it all to a really, really high standard. So the bricks and mortar is one thing, but the USP is, is that they get access to this site. They get access to people like us and our staff to help them learn and develop. You've also got, you've taken on board Dr. Jonathan Knowles. Can you talk about Jonathan's involvement? Yeah, Jonathan's been instrumental for us, really. Jonathan uh, joined us just over a year ago uh, with his background in education. He's um, obviously got his doctorate, which is great, um, but he's had 19 years in education. He also worked with trials and research. Um, so for me, he was a real pivotal appointment for us. Um, him and I have had to learn how to run a business, which has been really, really interesting. Um, but with his expertise, what he gives us is he gives us that credibility almost from the start you know we know we're gonna to have to build we know maybe in two three four years time we will be on the map really credible and a place to come but with Jonathan in post you know we've we've got that level of education that we need the qualifications um, but we've also got his involvement in the industry 19 years of working at Myasco um, he knows the system inside out he knows what, what we can do to improve what's already on offer um, and yeah he, he's pivotal he's been such a fantastic asset to us and hopefully for a long time to come he will be as well. Now, looking at the, the, the site as a whole, it's remarkable. It's enormous. Is it 14 full-size pitches you have here? So if you, you mackle all the small-size pitches together, we have 14 full-size grass pitches. Uh, there's 21 pitches in total if you take a pitch as a small pitch and a big pitch as a big pitch. Um, and then we've got two and a half synthetics. So in total, 16 and a half pitches if you include the synthetics. Um, but, you know, the site itself is 181 acres. We have 12 acres of woodland, which is half the size of our old training ground in woodland. That follows a really strict woodland management plan. Um, we've got areas of ecological interest, a nine hole golf course, 30 acres worth of landscape, lawns and, and beds. So when you take all that into account, like I said earlier, we manage a massive part of this footprint, a huge part of it. Um, and hence why we've got such a big team to operate, a, a team that I'm really proud that we've built. You mentioned the team, I think is it 51 people you've got on yeah, board to, to help? Can seven. you imagine that young lad, that young apprentice at Coventry <laughs> yeah. City when all you had to worry about was keeping a straight line yeah. to running all these people? Yeah, it's been, it's been quite a journey, you know, it's, it's sort of setting out as an apprentice or even as a 13 year old just volunteering, that's you know where it all began. Fast forward sort of nearly 20 years now, that makes me feel old, but um, you know, to, to have a team of 52 managing across three sites, running an effective business for the football club, um, have an involvement in European clubs where we've gone out and we've bought football clubs and I've had to learn about different cultures. You know, if you'd have said to me as my 16 year old self that this is where I'd be stood in sort of, you know, nearly 20 years time, I would have, uh, I probably would have laughed at you to be honest. Yeah, it is remarkable. Um, it's a silly question, maybe you probably one you won't answer, but now you've got the site here, is there anything you wish, I wish we'd done that, I wish we'd actually put that in and you hadn't, hadn't done it at the time? Plenty, to be perfectly <laughs> honest, yeah, there's, there, there's, there's a lot. I mean, as anyone that maybe has been through a project of this size, it moves really, really quickly and you can't have eyes on absolutely everything. Um, and certainly sometimes if there's a restraint on time, things have to sort of be compensated for. 
So each one of our departments, so football, landscapes, golf and mechanics, they've all derived five year plans for improvement. Now I know that might sound crazy because we've moved in and it should be all singing and all dancing. Um, but there are areas that we need to improve, we need to enhance um, woodlands, ecological management, you know, our lawn areas, all the things that we see that we want to get better. Mm -hmm. They've already got five year plans wrapped around them and we've only been in here six months, but that's the way we work, that's the way we operate. Um, we're always striving to make things better. Mm -hmm. Now, as you say, it was just just before Christmas Eve or something that you actually opened yeah. as a centre. Yeah. Um, in that six-month period since then, have you had people coming and take a look, fellow groundsmen coming to have a look at the site and seeing what you've got here? Yeah, well, unfortunately, because of the situation yeah. with the global pandemic, it, you know, it has been really, really tricky. But hopefully, as restrictions start to lift, we're going to you know, open the doors sensibly to people coming and having a look. I know inherently, as I would be, oh, I'm looking over the fence thinking, what have they done there? Um, and, you know, of course, open doors. And also with the Turf Academy, we want fellow groundsmen and greenkeepers and horticulturists to come in, look at what we're doing, be inspired and give us some feedback and tell us how we can improve for them. You know, so really important part of the next stage of the process is allowing people in, showing them around, showing them what we've got. And getting some feedback you know good bad ugly I don't mind if it's feedback we'll use it to improve so uh, two questions have you had your party yet after the FA Cup final no no is <laughs> <laughs> the honest answer no it's uh, obviously again just with restrictions now typically the club are, are exceptionally good at engaging their staff with success even when we're not successful you know we we have um, barbecues for families and the families are invited and there's fairground rides and they do all that stuff around the people in the club which we find really important and a big part of why I'm here um, and I know that had restrictions not been in place, there would have been a controlled party, a sensible party. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to celebrate it externally or as a group of staff across all the sites and you know, with all the other staff that are at the football club as well, which we typically would have done. Now, I mentioned at the beginning about how it's a remarkable foot, uh, football club and you've done remarkable things over the last five years. Yeah. There must have been film producers thinking there's a film going to be made out of all of this. <laughs> oh, no. If there was a film, who would play John Ledwidge? <laughs> well, that is a question I've never been asked before. Um, obviously, someone relatively average looking um, with a middle aged spread that's, that's come uh, born out of fatherhood and sitting in an office. So I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know, to be honest. But uh, you know, I'll take Gerard Butler because he's obviously far, far better looking than me and he's built like a, you know, like a Greek god. But uh, no, I don't know who would play me. I'd play myself, probably. <laughs> Well, John, thanks very much for allowing us to come and see this wonderful site. I know we're going to have a look around a little bit more of it, but uh, it's remarkable. And uh, good luck for the future of not just yourself, but the football club over the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you.